every photographer of the ocean that I know is consistently in pursuit of crystal clear water. California waters are not necessarily known for its visibility. Sometimes, however, it's clear enough to get images like this. Luckily, on that day, the water was somewhat clear by our standards. But recently, it's been looking more like this. This is a red tide, and it's been lingering consistently over the last couple of months. A red tide is a naturally occurring, higher than normal concentration of phytoplankton. You have to wonder how sea life reacts to it. I can attest the white sharks, they've taken notice. Look how many white sharks seem to be avoiding the red tide in this frame. And for good reason, red tides are notoriously known to contain low oxygen levels. Some red tides can be described as harmful algal blooms that not only deplete oxygen, they also produce toxins that are harmful to marine life, birds, and even humans. In this scene, it's evident the sharks are avoiding it. Sharks thrive in oxygen-rich water, and it's only natural to avoid water with low levels of oxygen. But not all species avoid it. These folks, merely humans enjoying the water, seem to be looking for sharks. But remember, the water isn't all that clear. And with an incoming red tide, it's even harder than ever to see the sharks below. Little did they know the shark was even closer to shore than where they were looking. Observing great white shark behaviors has proven to be very telling. One observation I make consistently is that white sharks tend to avoid humans generally. However, recently it sure seems it's the humans that are more attracted to the sharks. Something about seeing a white shark up close attracts humans just about every time I observe sharks and humans in close proximity. Here, you see the folks finally see the nearby shark. The paddleboarder points it out. The shark, like most often, gets out of the way and doesn't appear interested in being there any longer. Or does it? Not to my surprise, it was only a matter of time before this shark found a way to investigate the visitors from behind. It's classic behavior I witness time and time again, but look closely and you'll see this was not the only shark. Out of the murky water comes a much larger shark. For reference, I researched the model of the kayak in the frame, and I discovered it to be a 10-foot, 4-inch kayak. It's fair to estimate this shark is over 10 feet long, probably closer to 11. Predictably, this shark passes without incident. But it's evident, the kayakers, they never saw it. So what's causing these red tide conditions? It's actually a combination of natural factors and human factors. Red tides are more likely to occur when there are warm ocean surface temperatures, low salinity, high nutrient levels, calm seas, or rain followed by sunny days during the summer. Here's a comparison of the same location and how much it changed in just two hours. Observation indicates the sharks avoided the red tide for as long as possible. Some, however, entered into the tide a bit earlier as the kayakers and boarders chased them. Soon the water was brown but surprisingly, there was still some sharks observed lingering within. Here, you can see a shark's fin breaking the water's surface, despite what are likely very low oxygen levels on the water's surface. I found a handful of sharks remained at the surface levels of the red tide for quite some time. Globally, red tide events are increasing in frequency, and locally, these events are observed to be occurring much more based on data going all the way back to the 1960s. More research is needed to understand the factors that lead to red tides. But one thing is certain, it is not healthy for sea life for prolonged periods of time. It is important to note 
that not all algal blooms are harmful. Most blooms, in fact, are beneficial because the tiny plants are food for animals in the ocean. In fact, they are the major source of energy that fuels the ocean food web. But as everything in the ecosystem, it's about balance. Sharks are among the most resilient creatures on this planet. They did not survive four mass extinction events without that ability. It can be said that they may be more adaptable to environmental changes than we ever imagined. In the days after the red tide moved in, I was still able to observe sharks, well, being sharks. And I observed humans being curious humans as well. The sharks, however, did seem to drop in numbers in this area, eventually disappearing altogether. When will they come back is anyone's guess. I did manage to capture this very interesting behavior in the red tide prior to leaving. It's pretty evident what this shark is doing, but I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. I always find it intriguing to see the little things sharks do on a daily basis that many of us have not often seen. As of today, the red tide is still around, but no matter how ugly it may look during the day, it holds a beautiful secret for those that hang into the night. Bioluminescence. The waves glow beautifully at night, underscoring how nature always holds beauty. I greatly appreciate your support on this channel and I look forward to bringing you more information featuring shark experts and scientists. I encourage you to read the citations in the video description below to learn more about the shark topics discussed. If you'd like to learn more about how to get involved in protecting our sea life, please visit the links of the organizations listed in the video description below.